It's uh, very timely that our Dodger coverage kicks things off today, JP, in the Cactus League, because all eyes will be on a particular Japanese import that makes his spring debut on the mound today. Tell us about it. Matt and Carlos, good morning. I would say that that is credit to our producers to have our crew there on exactly the right day as Yoshinobu Yamamoto makes his Dodgers spring debut in the Cactus League. Certainly a lot of attention yesterday on Otani, and there should be. But now today, Yamamoto, I am of the mind, gentlemen, that he is as important to the Dodgers as anyone else that they acquired this offseason. Yes, that includes Shohei Otani, because when you think about the Dodgers rotation, they don't have Kershaw yet, nor do they have Bueller. So Yamamoto, we've already heard Dave Roberts talk about this, is going to start one of those first two games in Seoul, South Korea. He is their ace right now. He, of course, signs a contract in excess of $300 million, one of the great stars ever to come from NPB to MLB, the three times in a row winner of the Sawamura Award as the top pitcher in Japanese professional baseball. So there are, there are as many eyeballs as there were on yesterday's Otani debut for the Dodgers. I expect the exact same amount of excitement and billing for Yamamoto today. So we'll see how far he gets into the game, typically this time of spring. Usually it's only one or two innings and probably is going to be that range for Yamamoto today. But let's remember, the Dodgers season gets underway with games that count in three weeks. Just three weeks from right now. Games that matter. Two uh, against the Padres in Seoul, South Korea. So again, I think today a lot of attention on Yamamoto and that repertoire that we've heard so much about. The command that he has. And my friends, I, I can't wait to see it. The better that Yamamoto pitches, the more pitchers that we're going to see in North America try to emulate his javelin workout. Yes, he warms up and trains by throwing a javelin. Uh, it's a very new age philosophy that's worked quite well for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yeah, maybe, that's awesome. maybe we're on to something there. Timely that we're talking Dodgers and Pirates as those two teams kick off our 30 clubs in 15 days coverage. Again, we're talking Pirates at 4 Eastern today. Lauren and Cliff are down there to cover it live. Uh, among the questions we should be asking the Pirates. Where'd you go to high school at? Nope, that's not one of them. <laughs> uh, which young players will perhaps affect their bottom line most in 2024? Well, let's focus on today's starting pitching matchup. Pirates, Tigers, it's going to be Quinn Priester on the mound for Pittsburgh, and he could be a key to the Bucks season this year. We saw him pitching in the major league level a year ago, and I think so far this spring in his bullpen sessions, the Pirates' focus with him has been attacking the strike zone more. He has first-round stuff. He was a former first-round pick. And when he's in the zone and attacking, he has success. When he nibbles, much less so. So in the game today, I'm sure Lauren and Cliff, they're reporting on the scene there, will focus on Priester's ability to get in the zone more often. I know that's what Derek Shelton and the Pirate staff hope to see. And here are some of the options that you see right now. Of course, they were able to bring in a couple of veteran left-handers in Martin Perez and Marco Gonzalez. One name that we have not yet seen here on this screen, Paul Skeens, number one pick in the draft a year ago. And according to a lot of different analysts around the game, he could make an impact at the major league level this year. Look at the physicality that he brings, the stuff that he brings. Carlos, that he would not be a fun <laughs> matchup in the box. I mean, uh, that is a, a monster. major, yes, that it's is a, a major league pitcher. Look at him right there, Carlos. Beast charging at you. Looks like he's almost dunking on you, you know. Yeah. Uh, Look at the tackle you. Paul Skeens, we, we, we heard all about it during the draft. Quinn Priester. My priest is calling no, me. No, Priester, Lauren. <laughs> Priester. Uh, two guys that might move the needle for the Buckos. Hey, let's take you out to the Cactus League, to Scottsdale specifically, where yesterday, the Giants watched a little good news and then potentially took some news on the other side of the spectrum. Tell us about it. Yes, Matt. Well, let's begin with the best nickname in the show, the grandson of the wind, Jung Hoo Lee. Uh, there at the top of the lineup for the San Francisco Giants, making an immediate impact 
getting on base, going around the bases. He is someone that I think has a potential to become a superstar in the Bay Area. He wears number 51 for a reason. He grew up idolizing Ichiro Suzuki, so a great swing from him to get on base, and he works his way around the bases. That's going to be the way the Giants hope to catalyze their lineup here early this season. Now, on the concerning side, though, to talk about Jung-Hoo Lee and, and batting leadoff, I, I, I believe that we'll see Jorge Soler make a, a nice impact for the Giants coming over as a free agent. Uh, we'll see, again, the nice life, light and uh, left and right balance, I should say. Wilmer Flores, I still think he is someone that is underrated Flores for his bat-to-ball skills, one of the very best in the game. Now, on the concerning side with the pitching front, Tristan Beck is getting a, a, an examination of a hand issue. He was going to start one of these early spring games. Not going to happen because of this hand issue, so he's getting checked out there. And now Keaton Wynn as well with an elbow. So when you talk about the wrist for Beck and then elbow for Keaton Wynn, two starting pitchers now early on in camp having some concerns from a health perspective. That is not the way the Giants wanted to begin this spring, of course, Logan Webb headlines this rotation, but they need some help. Kyle Harrison, they do believe, could have an impact on them early on. Jordan Hicks already made his spring start, so that's a good sign that Hicks got out there. He missed some bats in his first time out. As we see there, Robbie Ray not going to be ready to go until the second half. Alex Cobb also out to begin the season. So guys, we talked about this rotation before and, and the expectations of maybe Howard and Jeffries helping. As we know, Matt and Carlos, still some starting pitchers out there, whether it's Snell, Montgomery, or even those that are maybe not quite as famous. Cueto, the former Giant, is there. Michael Lorenzen as well. Uh, Mike Clevenger, Zach Greinke has not yet called it a career. He is still out there. So as we talk about the number of, of injuries or concerns for the Giants, to me, gentlemen, this is one of the clearest examples that I have of a team that has arrived to spring training and with the Beck and, w and win concerns, you do start to say this could be a club that wants to add a little more pitching depth. And so it wouldn't surprise me at all if they make some phone calls to Newport Beach, California and Scott Boris about some of his remaining free agents.